Assalamualaikum and a very good evening. So today uh, we are here for a press conference uh, of a murder case that happened uh, last night uh, involving a girl and happened around the area of a uh, client's Nago. And we have uh, three suspects right now. One is in the custody and another two we are still uh, tracking it down. So may I know how did it happen? Based on witnesses uh, around there, we believe that the girl had been randomly targeted by a gang of robbers while she went to an ATM machine to take out her money. After following her to a secluded area, they attack her and force her to give them the money. However, we believe she fought back her attacker because there were signs of struggling happen. According to two witnesses, a man that we name him as Suspect A was seen to be holding a knife at the crime scene which is believed to be the primary weapon during the attack. Okay, uh, there are several methods of detecting the uh, DNA fingerprints. DNA fingerprints. Uh, one of it is the uh, restriction fragment length polymorphism, or in short, we call it RFLP. And this, in this method, uh, we are analyzing the repeating base pair patterns of the uh, DNA molecules. Uh, where uh, in our gene there are ninety five percent of the non coding gene, right? So. Uh, it's also called a uh, variant numbers tender repeat or VNTL. So uh, in this, we are using the restriction enzyme to cut down a specific regions of the uh, DNA strand and by using the southern blot and analyze where the uh, wire the radioactive uh, probes and we detect the repeated re repeated sequence by determining the specific pattern of the VNTL. So, uh, in this method, the drawback, the, the disadvantages of this method is uh, is require a considerable amounts of the DNA. Uh, and the another methods, which is called uh, amplified fragment uh, length polymorphisms or AFLP. So the advantages of this method is uh, less complicated operations and the uh, cost effectiveness of these procedures and. It used to amplify the microsatellite loss size of the human cells. So what is microsatellite uh, loss size? Which is uh, DNA loss size that are notable for high mutation uh, rate and high uh, diversity in populations. In, as a result, uh, it become widely used uh, for the identifications of the genetic variations and slight differences with, within the populations. So uh, the another method is STR which is uh, what we call that short tandem uh, repeats. So this STR is a uh, DNA regions uh, that uh, with the short repeat units found surrounding the chromosome's uh, central mus. So it's proven to have the benefits and uh, that makes them special, especially suitable for the human identifications. So, and for the next one is the Y chromosome analysis, which is uh, specifically used uh, useful uh, for the identifications of the male individuals 
and the paternal lineages. And last one is the mitochondria DNA analysis, in which uh, it be involving the degraded samples and uh, for the maternality inheritance or maternal lineage testing. Yeah, this is the uh, basic uh, techniques that used to identify the DNA fingerprinting. So I have another question. What is the method commonly used in Malaysia? Well, uh, one of the uh, commonly used methods in Malaysia for criminals uh, investigations is the short tendon repeat, which is STR. And for human identification purpose, it's important to have DNA markers uh, that exhibit the high possible uh, variations in order to discriminate between uh, individuals. So the smaller size of the STR alleles uh, that makes the STR marker better uh, candidate for use in forensic applications. And STR allele is one uh, has low mutation rates, which makes the data more stable and predictable. So that uh, of this, the because of these characteristics, the STR uh, methods, which with higher power of discriminations, uh, are chosen for human identifications in the forensic cases on a regular basis in Malaysia. So for this case, uh, how can the suspect be identified? On the crime scene, uh, we have uh, discovered five evidences. Uh, the first evidence is the weapon used to kill the victim, which is a knife. And uh, the blood stain on the weapon has been uh, discovered to belong to the victim. And also two sets of fingerprints uh, which belongs to suspect A and also suspect B. Uh, has been found on the weapon. Uh, the second evidence is the fingerprints we found on the crime scene, which has been identified to be uh, the blood stain of the victim and also the fingerprint of the victim herself. The third evidence is uh, the shirt of the victim uh, and stained with the blood of the victim herself. And the fourth evidence is the back of the victim and we have discovered the, the fingerprint of the third uh, suspect which is suspect C and also the fingerprints of the victim herself and the last evidence is the nails of the, vi uh, of the victim has actually uh, enabled us to discover uh, two sets of DNAs uh, from suspect B and also suspect C uh, and uh, we are very sure that suspect B and suspect C is a very high chance of being the culprit of this crime. That is all. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to ask a question. Is there any uh, law enforcement in Malaysia to keep the DNA profile of a person who has been arrested or convicted of certain crimes? Okay, thank you for the question. Okay, in Malaysia, we do have the law enforcement about the DNA profile database. In Malaysia, we call it as a Malaysian National Forensic DNA Database and it was formally established by legislation enacted in 2009. The legislation allowed the database contain profile from anyone suspected is or convicted of any crime and unidentified crime scene stains. And according to the protection law, it required the removal of innocent people's DNA profile in accordance with section 17 of the Act and the section of DNA samples once the individual DNA profile has been uploaded. Okay, I have one more question. Uh, can I know what is the objective of establish this act? Okay, we do have the objective for this law enforcement. And uh, one of the objective is it purposely for human identification in relation to forensic investigation. Besides, it's also used to utilize the DNA profiles and any information in relation to cap in the data DNA database for the purpose of identifying any living or diseased person. In the forensic DNA data bank, there consists of six indices and few of the index is a crime scene index, 
a suspected person index and also a convicted offender index. <laughs> So may I know what are the advantages and challenges of having DNA database in Malaysia? Okay, there are several advantages and challenges uh, when having DNA databases in Malaysia. So uh, the first one, I'm going to talk about the advantages. The advantages of having this um, database in Malaysia is that the info can be shared between databases held in different country, uh, countries to help recapture um, international criminals that usually they commit the crimes in different countries. Okay, the second advantage of having a DNA database in Malaysia is that it enables crimes to be solved quicker and more accurate. This is because we, uh, we can identify the suspects in a more convenient way. Therefore, it consumes um, less time and money. So, um, the third advantage is that uh, it can eliminate ethnic and gender bias. Um, for example, towards um, young men or unemployed. People, etc. Okay, however, uh, there are some challenges in terms of having this database in Malaysia. First one is um, it is hugely expensive because um, uh, in order to maintain the DNA database here, we need um, many expertise to maintain the data. The second one is that errors and false matches can occur due to misinterpretations. Therefore, um, this can um, be a threat to many uh, innocent people's lives. The third one, uh, which is one of the most highly debated issue in this um, in this matter, is that it actually violates uh, the privacy and human rights infringement. The third, uh, the fourth one is um, the DNA data can actually be used illegally by unauthorized people to frame a certain um, individuals. The last one is that uh, discrimination will happen to the overrepresented groups in which their DNA profiles have been stored previously in records. Therefore, um, uh, they are more um, highly suspected uh, by the police instead of the underrepresented group that um, usually uh, will easily evade the investigation. So uh, I guess uh, that's all from us today. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>